I think we're on the brink of an energy revolution. If you look at COP21, what are we all meant to make of it? Was it a miracle or was it a disaster? The British journalist George Monbiot, he'll say it was a miracle compared to what it could have been. It was a disaster compared to what it should have been. Did it bind us all to legally enforceable mechanisms to halt climate change? It didn't. What does one degree of warming look like? It means crops that are failing with a combination of drought and flooding. And it means people fleeing the broken fields in a pattern of distressed migration that takes 200,000 people a day from the countryside to the city. It means stuff like the albedo effect, where as the West Antarctic ice sheet melts, it gets darker, it absorbs more heat, it gets darker, it melts more. This is the stuff that the global community got together in Paris to try to avoid. What's the glint of light at the end of the tunnel that could give you optimism? If you just look at the technological trends, there is this stat which is called the energy return on energy invested. That's how much net energy you get out after all the energy you've put in. And if you look at fossil fuels, when Henry Ford was using the power of mass production to harness the energy of fossil fuels, it was fantastic. The EROEI, the energy return on energy invested, was about 1,900 to 1. You just put your finger in the ground, the oil came out. But now, as we've gone down the production curves, as we're scraping the barrel of the available oil, that energy return is getting lower and lower. But on the flip side, you've got this other trend, which is that for renewables, the energy return is just going up as improvements in nanotech drive it up. And it's not just that. The costs of the stuff are going down. And you can thank the Chinese in part for this. So what you're approaching is this point where you have a highly capital-intensive, uncertain technology with great deal of volatility in its price competing against an increasingly low-cost, zero marginal cost technology. By 2020, about 80% of the world's population is going to be living in places where renewables are below cost parity with fossil fuels. That's where the curves are headed to. That's the moment where it becomes politically possible to shift subsidies. You've got this amazing convergence right now of innovations in solar panels, in battery storage and in electric vehicles. Combine them together, what you're starting to see is this plug-and-play power supply where you can get cheap, renewable energy, where you can save it in your own house, in the power wall, and then you can use that to power your car and use your car battery to power your house when the sun's not shining. Your solar power, it just prints out free energy. Is it going to work? I think it's just an unexploded volcano. It's one of those things that's going to happen because it makes technological sense, it makes economic sense, it makes environmental sense. The question is going to be just how do we manage what could be an extremely challenging transition between the two energy sources.